Good morning. Now we have to look at uh, a problem of AC theory, which is basically looking at RMS values, root mean square values, and it's you have to do some calculations with current and voltage to find the peak values or the RMS values. First of all, we'll look at a problem about finding average current. Now you see that with an C circuit, the, the current is changing directions all the time. What is the average value for this current going to be? Sometimes it's going one way, some, sometimes it's going in the opposite direction. So what will the average be? Now, here we have the AC. What will the average be? We know sometimes it's going to be positive, and an equal amount is going to be negative. When we add up all the values of the positive and the negative value, we end up with zero. So the average current is going to be zero because half the time it's going to be positive, half the time it's negative. This is a problem that we need to find a mathematical trick to uh, overcome. So it's meaningless, misspelling meaningless, to talk of the average value of the AC current or the AC voltage. So we have to do a trick. Instead, we take all the val values and square them. If we square any value, unless you're dealing with complex numbers, you will end up with positive values. But then we can find the average of the positive values, the positive squares. So this is what we've done here. We've taken all the values of the current and we've squared them. Um, notice that we only have average uh, positive values now. This is the maximum current squared. And the average will be half of that. It will be half of those values. So we take all the positive values during the entire cycle. We find the average of the squares. This is the peak of all the squares. And the average is basically going to be half that value. Um, but we're not interested in the average of the squares of the current. We want to find the average of uh, the current. So basically, we have to find the square root of the average of the squares. So we do find the square root of the average. And we have what's called the root of the mean of the square, or we call it the root mean square, the RMS value. And basically you take the uh, the maximum current and you square it and you divide by 2 and then you, you square root it. Or just take I max and divide by root 2. So the, I, the RMS value for the current will be equal to the peak value, the max value, value uh, divided by root 2. So what we have here is the peak value for the current. The average will be 0, but we find the RMS value, which is basically I naught or I max, I peak, divided by root 2, or basically 71% of that value. Is this cheating? Is this just a mathematical trick to find an average that doesn't make any sense? No. This is what we have. The I, the RMS value for the current, is equal to the peak value divided by root 2. Um, and the thing is, if we square this value, I squared R, or I squared, gives us a measure of the power. So basically, this is linked to the average value of the power. If we take the power in a DC circuit, it's going to be I squared R or you could say in terms of voltage, V squared divided by R. Um, but for AC, the peak power, which is when the current is a maximum, is equal to the I squared, the peak value for I, times by R. But it's not going to be delivering this peak value of the current all the time. Sometimes it's going to be less, but we have to find the root mean square instead. So if we find uh, the average power, which is basically the I squared value. Remember, this is how we find out the, the root mean square. That This is the peak value for the power. The average power is going to be half of that. So basically, the average power is half of the peak power. So it's going to be I peak times I peak, which is I squared for the peak value, R, divided by 2. And we can do a little bit of a manipulation here. We know that if we take out this factor of 2 and we div split it into to root 2 twice, we find that 
is I0, which is the peak value for the current, divided by root 2 squared times by R. Or in other words, P, the average value for the power, is the RMS value for the current squared times by R. From the syllabus, so this is re linking the RMS value with the power. This is what you should know. The RMS value of an alternating current or voltage, the RMS value, is that value of a direct current that will give the same power. A 10 amp AC value will give a power which is equivalent to a DC circuit which is around 7 amps. So we basically say the, the current is not really 10 amps because on average it's going to deliver the same power as if it were 7 amps. So the RMS value would be 7 roughly. It's 10 divided by root 2. And here's another example. For alternating current, if you've got a peak current of 4 amps, for example, the RMS value is going to be uh, 4 divided by root 2. And if, if you have direct current, this means that a 4 amp AC, the peak AC value, is actually going to give the same power as a 4 divided by root 2 in a DC circuit. So this is a peak value, is actually going to give the same power as a, a DC circuit, which is 4 root 2. Or we could say the AC has a, um, an RMS, RMS value of uh, 4 divided by root 2. Uh, these are taken exactly from the formula booklet and this is from the formula booklet so you'll see in this form V0 being the maximum voltage or the peak voltage. The, how do we find the RMS value of the current? Well V is equal to IR. Okay, We already know the RMS value for the voltage. To find the current we know the resistance so this gives a, a, a current of 14.7 amps. The, va the maximum value of the current, okay, it's going to be greater than this. This is the RMS value for the current, so we basically just need to multiply by root 2 to scale it up by a factor of root 2. Remember, rearrange this, I0 is equal to root 2 times by I RMS. So there we go, so we multiply by root 2. The third one is the mean power dissipated in R1. OK, this is wrong. I made a mistake here. I calculated that the power dissipated across both resistors because I took the total potential difference and the total current. So this is the wrong answer. It should, you should use P is equal to I squared R or V squared over R. And then and then for the, to finish, the RMS value again across R2 is going to be um, I squared R or V is equal to IR and then calculate that way. Or you can, if you know, the way I looked at that, if you know the, the, the voltage, the RMS voltage across both resistors, um, in other words across 14 ohms, how much is across 10 ohms? Well, it's going to be 10 fourteenths of this. And that's the, what, what I did there. Here's a quick question. The diagram below shows the variation with time of the EMF generated in a coil rotating in a uniform magnetic field. OK. Um, so this gives you the, um, the EMF generated. This is the peak value which is E. What is the root mean square value of the EMF and also the frequency F of the rotation of the coil? Um, it basically oscillates once in T, so it's going to be, um, you know, the relationship between F and T is 1 over F, in other words, 1 over T. Um, the second thing is the RMS value is going to be E divided by root 2. So it's going to be this one. So it's going to be D. Let's try that one. Yay.